why it is that Asian kids do so much better at math than their Western counterparts. Right? Now, the numbers here are irrefutable, and they're extraordinary, the differences in uh, mathematics performance between um, uh, kids in Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, uh, Japan, um, and kids in America, Germany, England, or what have you. Um, the fact we just got a, a round of results from these international math test comparisons, I think a couple weeks ago, and we're talking, the difference is not this, the difference is, is that. Um, and if you look closely at um, trying to figure out why, it seems to be the case that the difference, the reason for that difference has to do with attitudes. It has to do with what is the attitude with which the child in those two sets of cultures approaches a math problem. And it seems to be the case that when um, Asian kids sit down and face a high school math problem, they have a different expectation of what solving that problem entails. They have an expectation that if they apply effort to the problem, the problem is solvable. Whereas when we look very closely at the attitudes of Western children, um, they seem to have the attitude that um, their ability to solve that math problem is a function of their ability, of their innate ability, something they either have or they don't. And that attitudinal difference seems to make a, um, a prof have a profound effect on the ability of kids to do well at math. Because as it turns out, the Asian approach to mathematics is the correct one. When I say correct, let me give you an example. So these international math tests that we give um, to kids around the world, they're called TIMS. We give the TIMS every four years. It's the same test to kids all over the world. And, um, and that's how we come up with these rankings of how countries do. Well, when we give the TIMS to kids, um, at the same time as we give them the math test, we give them a questionnaire. And the questionnaire is really long. It's 120 questions long. And it asks them all kinds of questions about that it will be useful to researchers. So how many hours do you study? Do your parents encourage you? Do you like math? You know, all those kinds of things. But it's really, really long. And it's so long, in fact, that most kids don't finish the questionnaire. It's just too, too long, right? <laughs> so a couple of years ago, this really brilliant guy um, called Erling Bo at Penn, uh, decided he would rank the countries of the world by what percentage of questions on the questionnaire <laughs> their kids finished, right? And you know what he found when he did that ranking? The two rankings were exactly the same. It's the same thing. When we, if you want to know how good a country does at mathematics, in other words, you don't have to ask that country's kids any math questions. <laughs> you just have to make them do a task that requires them to sit down at a seat for an extended period of time and focus on a task. Right? And if they can do it, they're good at math. <laughs> really, really fascinating. And that tells us um, where the deficit in our um, mathematical education in the Western world lies. It's not in our curriculum. It's not in the quality of our teachers. It's not in the size of our classrooms. It's not in the amount of money we spend on schools. It is the attitude in the head of the child as he or she sits down in 11th grade and does algebra or calculus, right? And by the way, nor is it a problem in our genes, as some people would like to say, of there's a whole bizarre argument that Westerners have um, an inferior set of genes when it comes to mathematics than Easterners. You know, a totally uh, ludicrous and unnecessary step in this argument. No, it's about culture. It's about a difference in attitude and about their ability to far more efficiently capitalize on um, the abilities of their kids. Um, uh, now, why, now, why is this the case? I mean, this is a, I'll just digress for a moment. Um, a really, really interesting question is, okay, if Asian cultures have profoundly different attitudes towards effort when it comes to mathematics, why? Right? Why does that come from? And nobody knows. Um, but in my book, I venture what I think is a plausible explanation. Um, and that is that I think it has to do with um, uh, patterns of effort laid down um, in, um, in historical agricultural practices. Uh, that when you look, what, what is the thing that um, Hong Kong, uh, South China, South Korea, and Japan all have in common? And that is they are historically rice growing cultures. Right? And what is distinctive about rice growing? It is the most uh, labor intensive and co cognitively complex form of agriculture known to man. Um, we know, so my, uh, my, my father's European ancestors in the Middle Ages in Northern England 
uh, probably worked 1,000 hours a year as peasant farmers. So what that meant was they worked from, uh, from dawn to noon, uh, five days a week. Um, on the weekends, they drank themselves silly. Um, and during the winter, they slept, basically. <laughs> um, and they got lots and lots, I don't know if you know this, but a peasant in medieval England got lots and lots and lots of holidays. Um, that peasant's counterpart in South China or Japan in the same period would not have worked 1,000 hours a year. They would have worked 3,000 hours a year. For the simple reason that rice farming is just a whole, it is not a, not a difference, not, a, not just a difference in degree from wheat farming, it is a difference in kind. It's a whole different way of working. It demands that you wake up at dawn and work all the way until dusk. It demands that you work on the weekend. In fact, there's a wonderful um, uh, 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 Chinese proverb that I quote in the book, which is, um, a man uh, who works dawn to dusk 360 days a year will not go hungry, right? Which is, encapsulates the difference between um, Eastern and Western agricultural practices. No, my peasant ancestors in Northern England, it would be inconceivable that they could call that a proverb. They would have said, <laughs> the man who works 175 days a year, dawn to 11, may or may not be hungry, right? <laughs> well, my argument is if your culture does that, if that's what you, guys, what you do for a, a thousand years, that attitude is a deeply rooted part of your makeup. And when your kids, even if they didn't themselves work in a rice paddy, when they sit down and face a calculus or an algebra problem, that legacy, that attitude towards effort and persistence translates beautifully to that most modern of tasks.